Hey, what is going on, everybody? It is Aaron Trevino, and we have a wonderful guest today. We have Giles Sonier with Bona Life Homes in Austin. What's going on, Giles? Hey, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm, I'm a real estate agent here in Austin, Texas. Me and Aaron met uh, in one of our communications classes over at UT and have stayed in touch ever since. And a little bit about me, I've been doing real estate for, shoot, close to three years now. Um, me and my team have been able to secure 107 closed deals in the past year and our fiscal calendar is about to reset in October. So, um, it's been, it's been really good. I've learned just so, so much. And like, you'll learn the best in real estate by just actually going through some really weird situations, uh, leaning on our team leaders to give us some guidance since they've been doing it for 10 years. Uh, and I still feel like, you know. Just a young man, but after three years of being in real estate, I do feel like I'm the, the kind of professional that can walk a first time home buyer through 100% of the process and they can see exactly what we're going to do for them. So then my team provides a little bit of value and they, they can get really excited about hopefully buying a home. Yeah, absolutely. So you kind of mentioned how you work with first time home buyers. Um, you know, what's that initial contact like? And then how do you kind of, you know, move forward from there? Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of a mix of marketing things. Uh, when it comes down to it, not only are we a real estate group, but we are also a small business who also has a branch that is doing our marketing and making sure that we're getting these houses out there. Uh, step one is honestly, uh, we meet a lot of folks off of Facebook who are just checking out our Facebook, kind of looking through realtors and seeing who, who's going to be the most professional for me. Uh, my job is speed to lead. There's probably me and 10 other real estate agents that all just got a, a ping that says, hey, this person possibly wants to buy a home. So we, we definitely focus on getting to that person as quickly as possible um, and showing them that, you know, I guess a lot of folks in sales have a reputation of um, you know, just wanting to do the deal as fast as possible, get past it, go on to the next deal. Uh, we want to be a different kind of team that uh, will essentially hold your hand through every step. You, like, if you don't understand why we're making a certain decision, it is okay for our folks to be 100% honest with us and say, hey, like, I don't understand why we're going to negotiate in this certain way. Or, you know, I think that <laughs> that sounds like we're going to negotiate the price too much and we might lose the house. Um, our, our main goal with first time home buyers is just providing a certain sense of trust and uh, trust in that we are going to be loyal to them, that we're never going to um, act as anything other than a, a fiduciary agent for them. Somebody who's going to say, okay, if, if I was in this exact same deal in with this exact same house, like what would I want for my finances? Like, how are we going to get these guys the most money possible? Otherwise, as a first-time home buyer, it's like, ah, I'll just keep renting. It seems so much easier to not move. Um, it's kind of educating these folks, inspiring them to buy a house because uh, even, even in the house that you see me sitting in, um, it, it has already increased in value. So like me and my wife who are about to start our family. We have a baby girl coming February 2021. Um, and I can kind of speak about our house and that the fact that we are starting a family with a little bit of equity, which not everybody's you know able to do. Um, first time home buyers are fun because they're always so sweet and patient and caring. Um, and they've got a lot of good questions that we, we want to make sure that we make them feel validated because everybody should have questions about real estate. It took me three years to actually feel like I knew what I was doing and like I'm able to train somebody else to do it. Aaron, I could, I could train you if you wanted to be a real estate agent. It is just as simple as sitting down with me and having a buyer consultation um, and, and talking about how we get people to trust us. You know, like it should be like if me and you are sitting at the bar and we're talking about it, I'm not going to pull out like, oh, well, you know, let's talk about specific loans and things like that. I can only speak to the houses that I see going up around me, the how the, the prices that they are selling for, um, really just providing you data in an interesting way that says Austin is 
somewhat of a unicorn when it comes to real estate in, in USA right now, especially in the time of COVID. Um, we just uh, want to be a helping hand. There's a, there's a lot of real estate groups in Austin and not all of us can handle all the business. So we just want to make sure that we can put ourselves out there and be seen as people who are going to be loyal, people who are going to be honest and people who are going to be confident going into negotiations to save you guys some money. Yeah, absolutely. So I know you mentioned um, you work a lot with the first time home buyers, you know, they, they come in, they're excited, they have a lot of insightful questions. What are some common questions that you know, that your clients tend to have for you when it comes to buying a house? I think the big number one is down payment. I think it freaks people out that their parents are telling them, hey, you're going to need 20%, um, which is, is not exactly true. Like if you have 20% that you can put down, your monthly payments are going to be stellar like <laughs> you're, you're going to be paying off your little bit of interest and then like a good amount of your principal per month um, uh, essentially you know we we just want to make sure that we um don't kill that excitement like you know like speaking man to man that it is kind of scary to hear somebody say hey put down 20 percent well, shoot, if I want a house that is $300,000, what is that going to be like? Forty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000? And I say, you know what, just forget it. Like, I'm going to keep renting. It's just easier to do it that way. Um, it's, um, it's, it's, I guess, fun, fun in a way to make sure that people are getting represented the, the correct way because first time home buyers, um, essentially we'll ask, you know, what's the, what's the smallest amount I can get away with putting down? Like technically the government will provide you your down payment. It just comes at the cost of paying for mortgage insurance, which even if that's the deal breaker, we can also talk about um, there being other possibilities like uh, refinancing 10 years down the line. So like if we start off with an FHA loan that will essentially the government says, Hey, here's 3.5% of whatever the price of the house is. You're going to be paying that back in the price of it, you know, rolling it into your loan. At the same time, they're adding a mortgage insurance just in case anybody defaults. They have essentially a, a, a small stash of money that they can have enough time to figure out what to do with this house, sell it to somebody else, do something like that. Um, at the same time, it's, uh, it's great for folks who only need 3% of the house to be able to actually get under contract, go through offers, get inspections, and ultimately when we get to closing table, be 100% confident that we got a really solid deal without having to put down forty to $60,000. Really, you, you know, in a lot of the cases, we could get away with only having to spend call it two to 5,000 to be able to actually get to closing as long as we know that we have a lender or, you know, a, a loan officer that is able to pull a couple of different strings that not everybody knows that they can pull. So we, you know, we lean on a lot of it, just pulling from our expertise. Uh, so down payment, obviously the big one, what kind of loan should I have? Should I go with FHA? Should I go with USDA? There's a lot of different ways that these are incentivized for you. Uh, we just put it all on the table and we'll make sure that we can educate you guys that, hey, if we do go that route, we're gonna need money for closing costs. Or if we do this thing different, then you know we'll, we'll need to make a few different shifts going into negotiation, which uh, ultimately it's not my decision. If somebody wants to go for it, great. I'm gonna represent them at you know 110%. If somebody doesn't want to go for it, then we talk about uh, alternatives and solutions just to make sure that we always keep them on track to get them to their goals. Um, other big questions are really just like, what are houses going for in Austin? What parts of town do I want to move to? Where are stores being built? Where are malls being built? Uh, where are highways being built? Tesla being built? Uh, Apple growing? Um, essentially it's a lot of like, Hey, especially if these are folks that are moving from a different state, it's like, like, why did, why did you move to Austin? Like I'm from San Antonio. They usually ask like, what do you like about Austin? 
you know, I like music. I like, you know, talking to people who are very like-minded. They are young professionals who are saving money towards being able to buy houses and starting a family. Um, and not to mention that UT is a lot of the reason why it's, it's, it's pretty easy to come back here. Like I love San Antonio to death. It's the, the place that raised me, but Austin is just much chiller. The people are nicer. The, they drive a little less crazy. So it's um, easy to be honest with folks. Like I'm not just going to um, put a silk screen over their eyes and be like, oh, it's, it's the most incredible place. Like money grows on trees here and things like that. Um, it's really just telling them about the small things, like the food's great, the houses are getting more expensive, the taxes aren't egregious yet, um, no income taxes here, so um, there's, there's just, I mean, I could fill a book full of questions saying, hey, this is, this is what goes into buying a house and this is how we can guarantee that your price is going to be backed by data. Guys, if we can't back it with data, then it is harder to negotiate your price in, in the direction you want it. Whether we're buying a house and you're saving money or whether you're selling a house and we're getting you more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it kind of seems like it's, um, you know, it's plenty easy for just someone to say, oh, well, I'm not exactly close to the down payment or I don't feel comfortable making the down payment. So I'm just going to rent. And then, you know, they never really get out of that rut. Right. And it's not even really like, I don't want to call it a rut. I mean, me and you have been there or are there where we are renting a property so that we can get to work easily so that we can have, you know, enough rooms to support uh, having a spouse or having a dog, have, you know, those things. I never want to make people seem like uh, renting is just the worst, but what makes it, a little bit of the worst is that you're paying your landlord all the equity that you ultimately deserve. So if I was renting right now, let's see, renting the same exact place that I'm in, my payments are going to be a little bit higher. And then at the end of the day, when this place does sell, however much it increased by is not mine. Like that's the only downside of renting. Like it's great to, if something breaks, you as a renter, you have rights and you have the right to live in a safe quiet and nice place where you can you know watch movies and sleep and cook food and you're you're not as bothered at the same time um you know how 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 expensive is it to change a light bulb versus like if i do that myself like if this house is growing by let's call it ten thousand per year like yeah i'll change a few light bulbs so that i can get that ten thousand like that is not a problem at all. Um, we see those as a lot of the motivations going forward in that, hey, I'm, I'm already giving, let's say you're paying $1,000 a month for rent. I'm giving $12,000 to my landlord and that doesn't count that equity. So I never want to rag on renting because like, in the future, I want to be an investment owner. Like I want to have investment properties and be able to help folks that are still renting and you know, they're renting here in Austin because they don't know where their job's going to go next year. They may move to Seattle. So why am I going to buy a house here? Um, you know, we can, we can be honest in that way of saying, ultimately, if we need to rent, that's still fine. I can still find you a place. But if you have the ability to buy a house, we might be able to, let's say you stay in Austin for only like five years we might be able to get you an extra 20,000 in your pocket come to sell up your house or even more just the way that the market's going. Um, just providing a little bit of expertise saying this is, this is my honest thoughts on houses. If like I'm not a hundred percent honest, I lie about certain features of a house. It is very possible that somebody can take my license, which keeps, keeps us all honest. Like that's why you want to work with a licensed agent is because we, have the fire under us that the state expects us to act with high morals and ethics that we treat our clients with priority respect and that we uh, aren't, aren't, you know, swindlers. Like I'm not selling back in the day, like short story, I used to sell cutco knives. I sold a lot of them. Um, but at the end of the day, I didn't get much uh, from my efforts. 
So it's like, why do I want to keep selling this product? For houses, it's very easy to see the value in um, that it might be one of the top investments that somebody could make in life. Uh, that it is, uh, you could put the same amount of money in stocks and get the same amount of money coming out, but being able to have walls around you to see your investment physically existing uh, has a value of its own. And it's fun selling a product that I truly believe in. Like, do you mean to buy cocoa knives? Yeah, they're nice, but like for a thousand bucks, it's rough. Like, do you want to buy this house? Yes, it's in a neighborhood that is appreciating 5% year over year. Uh, it's in a place that has taxes that are funding parks and, you know, community centers going up near you. So if these, you know, if this seems like the kind of place you could raise a kid in, then this is, this is something we should really zero in on. Yeah, it's fun. yeah absolutely. I, I know you talked a bit about timelines, you know, earlier in the video, you talked about, you know, have, you know, having the option of a 10 year refinance, maybe someone's moving to Seattle and they're on a five year plan. You know, what would you suggest, you know, if you're with your husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, you're looking to buy a house and you know, you may be in Austin for two or three years, you know, would you suggest just renting for that period of time? Would it be worth buying a house? Well, it, it all comes down to if you have that kind of money to invest. So, um, ultimately if you don't, if you need that money to feed your spouse and your kids, obviously, you know, you're going to want to prioritize them. Uh, if you can make a little bit of extra money on top, like who doesn't want to make a little bit of extra money. So that's where, you know, the fork in the road comes in that, Hey, there are two good options. You can either rent and live in a cool place where if anything breaks, it's not your responsibility to fix. And you're going to save a little bit of money there. Or you can live in a place, even if you're only going to stay here for two, three years, um, you, you most likely will be able to sell this for a higher price than you paid for when you bought it. Just because uh, the way inflation is going, it happens every year. Um, we, we expect that even if you live there for two years, yeah, we're not going to be able to pull $100,000 out unless you live in some like, you know, wild part of town that is growing so fast that it may do that. Uh, but even, even an extra thousand dollars in your pocket is worth not renting and not getting any of that equity. Um, but at the same time, to my first point, if you don't have enough money to pay for um, an earnest money deposit that goes into securing a contract, and then we don't have the money to actually go to the closing table and pay for the lender to put all of these papers together we need to have that discussion now like we do not want to get to the point where we are about you know we're under contract and then you say hey actually like i can't afford closing costs of upwards of five six seven thousand dollars it was like well then like back to the drawing board maybe we'll talk about renting which is still a good option the end goal being a roof over your head for your family to be secure and safe. Um, we just want to provide an honest service that points you towards either direction and the fork in the road. Like we know there's only two directions. Like you gotta live. Um, so it's 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 kind of been not an easy sale, obviously, but um, but um, something I believe in. Like you know, every everybody has the right to have a roof over their head and feel safe at night. And not everybody does, even here in Texas, not everybody has that privilege. And so we're working to get people educated about real estate and see if we might be able to get roofs over heads. Yeah, so could you elaborate a bit, a, a bit more on that? Just being able to get roofs over people's heads, um, is that more so about affordable housing or? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I think that's one big issue here in Austin. Obviously, especially here in COVID, uh, people have started putting uh, videos of homeless camps popping up in certain parts of towns, uh, essentially saying, hey, this is something that the city hasn't taken care of and that will also affect the area I live in, the property value, the uh, desirability of that area. So I 
you know, essentially want to be somebody who is in the middle, who wants to get everybody housed, but also understands how difficult it is um, to find housing for everybody. Uh, at the beginning of this uh, COVID pandemic, um, I believe a lot of the homeless population here in Austin was being uh, pointed over towards a, a hotel that the city was essentially paying for. If we would have used that same same money to get them on a track towards home ownership, um, we we would hope that it was it's a kind of a situation where um, if you buy a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you teach him how to fish he gets some equity in his pocket. He has a roof over his head. He is able to go to work knowing that his, his things are safe. Um, so I, I, I know that that is something that the city is having trouble dealing with. Um, and we've, we've seen it get a little bit worse. The, the fact that people are starting to feel that they have to get on Facebook as vigilantes and say, hey, like, does the city not see what's happening in my neighborhood? Because like, you know, and it, it, I moved here because I was told it was safe, and now it's turned into this whole other thing because the city just doesn't want to deal with it because it's, you know, um, because it's a hard issue. There's no real solution, so we need to start taking steps towards that. And people, you know, don't want to talk about it, but are being very forced to talk about it now. Um, and I'm somebody who enjoys politics, enjoys. Um, standing up for, for people's rights and equality. Um, we are obviously uh, an equal opportunity um, employer and, and member of housing. Um, recently, those programs have also taken a big hit due to the federal government cutting some funding. Um, so it's really, you know, just making sure that we're part of that conversation. Like if I'm just selling million dollar houses, it's very easy to not even care about that issue. But I think realtors need to be thinking about people who are disenfranchised at, at, at the moment and make sure that if they don't have a voice, we speak for them. Sure, sure, absolutely. So in terms of you know affordable housing or more so the direction that you know those sort of those sorts of projects could be, you know, where do you see the city kind of growing in that respect? I, I think a lot of it is just, um, it comes down to local governments, making sure that there is legislation to uh, move funding to sectors that have shown um, efficient change, whether that be in uh, making sure these folks um, have access to uh, mental health care or care for addiction or um, even a, so essentially we get into the the problem of okay so if we build housing for folks who are in a rough part of their life like does that not eventually just turn into a, the you know in, in a big city they have essentially what people call the projects where it essentially feels like the government is just saying hey uh, you know, we built you these places, go live in them, like, problem fixed, right? Well, no, you've now put people who are dealing with mental health issues all compacted together um, in, in a way that might make some people feel unsafe. And so it's not really, so that, that doesn't feel like the right solution, you know? Like, so if we do move funding, but end up just building, um, a new part of the city that people don't want to move to what's the point in building it because it's, it's it's not helping people it seems like it's just going to provide a hot spot for gentrification and that's not what anybody wants we want to see a city that is uh united in our goals uh united in our ethics towards treating people right making sure that people have food on the table and a roof over their head um, I think people are, are starting to use this as another uh, another reason to move to Austin or to not move to Austin. Right? We're, we're hearing people on, on the realty side saying too, like, hey, some people who thought they wanted to move to Austin are now saying they don't want to for political reasons. Like, these are, these are all things that we need to deal with with 
incredible sensitivity because you never know what path somebody is on, what they've seen in their life and, and what views they have. So it is uh, a very fine line to walk to be a person of high moral value who follows ethics, uh, who, who represents folks without a voice, uh, but at the same time doesn't, doesn't put that, that opinion, um, that life drive into action. Because at the end of the day, we are just a business but we want to have a heart and your heart without a business is, you know, turns into a, a like a, com a big company, a conglomerate, you don't, you know, feel like it's somebody who's working towards the benefit of the people. Yes, yeah. absolutely. No, it, it is interesting because you're kind of having, um, it, at least it, it almost got, I don't know how it feels for you, but it kind of seems like there's almost a, a shift in business culture that we're experiencing now that we didn't have before you know, technology really heavily coming into play. Yeah. And it's definitely, it's, it's hard to navigate all of those. Um, it's very easy to be middle of the road and not even get involved in it. Um, but I see the value in standing up for people, um, without disenfranchising people who might work with you on, on the opposite side. Uh, some people think that, you know, uh, if I'm going to be investing in the city, I want to make sure that it's a, in a good neighborhood. And um, oftentimes you have to walk that thin line of making sure that, like, I'm hearing your thoughts and opinions and I'm kind of uh, taking my own self out of it. Like when it comes to buying property, it, it ultimately isn't about me. But like a lot of people work with me because I have a heart. And like, you know, we have these morals and values that are driving us towards treating people right. As opposed to just, you know, doing the darn thing and getting them out of the way. We want to build relationships, not just houses. Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely uh you know, that's definitely a great thing to look for in a company. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah KW, uh, so our brokerage is uh, Keller Williams. Um, which is started by Gary Keller. Um, we've got a couple of offices around Austin and we've got a lot of agents. We definitely probably have a majority of the market share when it comes to the houses that are going on market. Uh, at the same time, we don't want to just be a monopoly. Like, no, you know, we, we don't just want to have one brokerage in Austin. Like, yeah, this may be our hometown, but at the same time, you as a buyer or as a seller have, the right to work with whoever you want to, whoever you think is the most competent, will treat you in a professional way, will get you the results that you desire, which are usually positive ones. So uh, Keller Williams is good. They grip a lot of education and um, we've enjoyed them essentially being our backboard and taking care of us on the side of being represented and supervised so that we are um, doing things by the book and by the law Otherwise, it, it puts to risk our, our licenses and our, our very career that we've already built. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so in terms of, you know, where Bonalife does most of their business, I know you said Keller Williams is all, obviously all over Austin, but is there a particular area that you focus on strictly or where do you, where is yeah. it? Well, so, and it's always going to come down to what's close to your house. Um, a lot of the folks in Bonalife homes live in Maynard, Texas which is growing just so fast, like at a rate that is so fast, people are also considering Elgin and Elgin is, is growing at a faster rate than anybody thought as well. So we do most of our business in uh, the, the Manor and Elgin areas, uh, especially because there's a lot of land to be bought out there and a lot of investors are looking at, okay, well, if Tesla is going down the street I buy this plot of land, will it turn into a neighborhood? Because that could be a great investment. Uh, so we were voted uh, Maynard's favorite realtors in 2019, which is super awesome. Um, we hope to do the same in 2020 to continue our reign. Uh, at the same time, uh, that comes with the relationships that we grow, that, that we grow and they continue to feed and uh, the service that we provide. And, Everybody knows, like, if you're going to work with Bonalife Homes in Maynard, they're the ones that have 
you know, their ear to the street that know the houses that, you know, aren't, aren't listed yet, but like come today's Thursday, come tomorrow morning, we already know, hey, we have a list of like five or six houses that we've already sent to the folks that we are looking for that only are working with us. So we provide our value in Manor by being, you know, the man on the street, the person who is driving by the houses that you want to buy. Um, so, you know, Manor is in our, we don't only work in Manor and Elgin areas. Um, we were up in Pflugerville, Hutto, um, just had a closing in Georgetown last week. Uh, Leander is growing just so darn fast that we're out there as well. I'm looking for investment properties in Leander, Liberty Hill, Lago Vista. Um, we don't particularly specialize in South Austin, but one of our agents lives in the Kyle Buda area. So we also are able to, you know, focus in on her having all of that business so that we don't have to drive from Georgetown all the way down to Kyle and rush hour of traffic. Like the, the benefit of working with us as a team is that we've got 10 people all working just as hard as our team leaders are, uh, showing people houses all around the town. Like we, we've got, we've got people in Kyle View that we've got folks in Westlake, Northwest Austin, Round Rock, Cedar Park, you know, all over the place. So at, at any point, if me as a buyer specialist can't show you a house because I'm showing somebody else a house, I've got five other buyer specialists that will represent you just as strongly. Or if you want to work with me, I can just pay my buddies to open doors uh, and treat you like they would any of their buddies. So it's, uh, you know, focus out of Manor, but uh, some of my recent sales have been up in Colleen, which is about a 45 minute drive from let's call it like North Austin. Uh, we're all the way down in San Marcos as well in New Braunfels, uh, pretty much right up to the, the city limit of San Antonio. So even if you're in one of those places, it's like, yeah, so it's not my specialization, but I do have access to the MLS. So the data says that in New Braunfels, houses are selling like this. If we price it like this, very possible that we have it sold within the first week. Um, so it's, it's exciting to have such, you know, such a big area to work with. All of those areas are growing too as a result of Austin's downtown just exploding as a kind of a, a tech mecca. Yeah, absolutely. It kind of seems like the entire, you know, kind of San Antonio up to Austin corridor is really opening. But uh, yeah. what I find interesting also is Colleen. I wouldn't have really, I would have just kind of assumed that, you know, people who are going to live and work in Colleen they buy in Colleen, but it kind of seems like people are willing to pay Colleen prices, but commute into Austin. Absolutely. And what we're seeing too, um, especially I, I've got a, um, a couple up there that we sold a house to them back in October. Um, we were looking for their forever house. They had a house in Leander, which was also awesome. It had a great hot tub in the back, but um, the husband was like, you know, got to have that pool, man. We've, always dreamed of having a pool and we don't mind driving to Austin. It's only a 45 minute drive. Uh, folks who are moving from, you know, rural areas all over the country, like that's, that is absolutely nothing. So if I can pay $250,000 and have a house that has 2,500 square feet plus, four plus rooms and a pool, like that's, that's something that if it was in Austin, it would be going for easily 450 to 500,000. But up at Colleen, you get everything you want. You just have to drive a little bit more. And all the stores are there. Uh, obviously, Fort Hood, it's not going to stop existing. It's going to continue growing. So we are able to provide the data out there and say, hey, if, if this is where you want to live, even if you want to move away one day, we can be pretty confident that you're going to sell for more than you bought it for. Uh, yeah, Colleen is awesome. Like, there's so many little towns that I did not know exist that – People are like, yeah, hey, go go check out Belton. Go check out Nolanville. Um, the outskirts of Temple, um, you know, just south of there, Salado. Like, there's a lot of houses that are being built on an acre of land, which is huge compared to in the city. We only see maybe 0.25 acres. Like, that's about as big as the area you own. Like, out in, out in Salado or Killeen, that might be able to get you five to ten acres 
So it's it's definitely an investment. It's it's a conversation that needs to be had up front to say, I, I want to focus in on the areas that you want to live in. Uh, if you don't want to drive 45 minutes in from Colleen, no worries. Just We just want to let you know we have access up there. We actually have uh, one of our buyer specialists, Lauren Douglas. She is a third generation realtor out in Temple, Texas. Her grandma did it, her mom did it, now she's doing it. And so that is, you know, one of her main focuses is, is making sure that she continues that good legacy and that she, you know, continues a good reputation that her, her grandma and her mom built. So it's cool to be able to represent uh, a brokerage in Austin so far from Austin. Like there are other KW agents up there in, in Colleen and Belton, but a lot of people choose to work with us because we, we have so much more business out there and we're selling houses out there at a higher rate than people who are focused sometimes. So, you know, it kind of lets people know too, like just cause you're moving to um, small town, Texas doesn't mean you have to use the one realtor that exists there. Like all of us realtors, we're, we're licensed to work anywhere in Texas. It just comes down to, am I specialized in that area? Do I know where the stores are and where houses are being built? And, can I be confident that it's going to be a great place for you and your family? And schools are great. And just provide all that up front so that they trust me. And then the fun part comes of us actually seeing houses. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You no, know, it is pretty interesting kind of thinking about, you know, when people say that Austin's booming, you kind of assume, you know, maybe the glitz and glamour of downtown. But a lot of people from the outside wouldn't normally think that people are moving here to these smaller cities to be able to, you know, enjoy the great you know, stop, you know, stop. right. Like kind of the, the small Texas values that you expect if you're moving. So my wife is from uh, the outskirts of Houston. Like, you're like, Oh shoot. Okay. I'm going to be working in Austin, but I don't, my God, I'm not a big city person. I don't want to live in a condo and pay a million dollars for it. And it's like, well, come talk to us. We have options for you. Like, if you're new to Texas, not a lot of people are going to tell you about the, the places on the outskirts of Austin. They're going to, you know, try and keep you close to work. But if you're cool with driving 30 minutes, we can get you pretty much a mini mansion out in Maynard for less than the price that you would get in an 800 square foot condo downtown. Um, so it's, it's cool to be able to essentially be everybody's insider. Um, somebody who is a professional, like, you may not know the town, but like, we'll know the town for you. And by the end of us working together, you're going to feel like you were born here. Just because it's still, we know every part of town. We've been there. I drive by there. I, I take my kids to play there. I take my dog to that park. It's um, back to a trust thing. Like, it's, it's hard to trust somebody if they're uh, new to town as well. If I just moved to Austin and now I'm slaying in houses here and somebody says, well, tell me about Georgetown, it'd be very like, I'm going to have to do some hard Googling before I can handle that question. Um, but because I've been doing it for three years and we've lived in Austin now since we started at, at UT Austin back in 2011-ish, like, well, hey, I've got a decade of living in the city and I've already seen it grow rapidly. So I can just pass on that knowledge to the next guy and they can know like, hey, if you're moving to, to Elgin, Texas, you're going to love it because the barbecue out there is like no other in Texas and, and it's going to continue to grow and you can still buy that acre of land like you always wanted uh, and get to downtown in 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. I know you mentioned, you know, you can buy that acre of land to maybe be able to build a house or something on it. And then also before you mentioned a little something about, okay, well, you know, if Tesla's down this road, I'm going to buy this lot, you know, in hoping that it would be a subdivision one day and I can sell it. Um, right. Do you guys do uh, raw land sales or how would, yeah. how would people go about that? Absolutely. We, we usually lean on um, another one of our buyer specialists, Chris Estrada, is, is also our, our land specialist. So when we're going into a land deal, uh, of course, they have gotten a lot harder. Like, let's say a year ago, the price on a piece of land in Del Valley is going to be different than pretty much as soon as Tesla said, hey, here, we, we signed the papers, we bought some land, we're going to be moving to Del Valley. The price 
changes rapidly. So essentially, you know, a lot of people, what they're doing is buying the places just on the outskirts of that, knowing that, okay, if Tesla is being built here in Del Valley, uh, it brings a certain number of jobs here. It's going to create um, a little bubble in the economy that continues to grow and it feeds off of all of this land because everybody sees, okay, if we build stores and stuff here, everybody wants to be right by Tesla or up in Northwest Austin. They want to be right by Apple. What can we do to be five years, 10 years ahead of the curve and say, okay, I'm going to get this land at a beautiful price. Let's say 10 years down the road, even if I want to build my own house on it, like I, I can be assured that I'm not going to be killed in taxes and that I'm going to get that money back that I invested. If I'm going to lose money on it, no, I'm not going to invest there. <laughs> yeah. As a fiduciary agent, I would never advise you to do a deal that is going to lose you money. So it's cool to talk to folks who are thinking so far ahead. With a first time buyer, we are thinking a month at a time. With an investor, we are thinking decades at a time and how the economy is going to change specifically for real estate in this area, you know, potential potentials, you know, putting, putting uh, money down on something that could be a hundred percent gain. or could be a small loss. Like we present those as risks. Um, but it's, it's, it's a hard game, man. It, it all comes down to what the restrictions are in that city. Uh, how big the land is, what is on the land, um, if it's in a flood zone. Even even if it is in these, like if it has these stipulations, probably still will sell uh, or increase in value. It just comes down to having a real estate agent that is honest and loyal enough to tell you up front, hey, I'm going to be doing all this research. I'm going to give you all of these what-if questions. And as long as we're able to have an answer that at the end of the day, we feel it's going to get us more money in the future, then yeah, let's, let's go ahead and push that button and, and make that quote unquote bet that, Hey, this land, if I buy it at say 10,000 and one day I can sell it at 150,000, like that sounds like something that we can make happen on this piece of land. And yeah, let's, let's pull the trigger on that one because that's, <laughs> that's a hell of a deal. Any investor will tell you that that is that is the kind of unicorn we want to find for you guys. Heck yeah, that's awesome. It, it's neat that you're kind of running the gamut of you know helping clients in the short term, being able to find you know the house that they really want, but yet also offering that service of you know thinking like you were saying, thinking ten years ahead um, for someone who want to invest. Absolutely, and as a quick plug to you know the benefits of working with the team. If your buddy's a solo agent, definitely work with him. Like it's your buddy, you know he's going to take the best care of you, go above and beyond. Uh, but a lot of people choose to work with Bonalife Life Homes as a team because, like you said, we're working with first-time home buyers, we're working with investors, uh, we're working with buyers and sellers, we're working with stagers, uh, contractors who can renovate your house, custom builders that can build your house um photographers uh, administrators contract coordinators marketing professionals this is you know when you work with a team that's that's what you're getting you're you're essentially getting 15 people all working with the same goal of getting you a house versus your buddy who is going to bust his butt and get you a great deal you know we might be able to earn your business at the end of the day, if, if what you want is to save the most money possible. But either way, it's, you know, a lot of people have worked with me because they're our friends from college. Uh, and at the end of the day, they get both. You get to work with your friend and you get 15 people busting their butts to make sure that your dream home is right around the corner. Heck yeah, well said. That's definitely you know, the benefit of working with not only a, a great, a good team, but also working with great people. Um, yeah. but yeah, Giles, I mean, is there anything that you haven't said that you'd like to really just hit home? No, uh, I guess the big thing would be if you're thinking of buying a house, call me and set an appointment, even like 
So our appointments usually only take about as long as this podcast goes, about 45 minutes to an hour. I can walk you through each step of the home buying process. I can show you what is on the market. I can show you market data saying how quickly uh, and accurately these houses are selling. Uh, all within an hour, our, our main goal is to have you walk away where if your neighbor says like, oh, hey, I was, I was thinking of buying a house, you know, I'm leasing this one. My clients can go to them and say like, do you know the steps of buying a house? Um, and luckily they usually share step number one is talking to a real estate agent. They give them my card and, and they can make sure that they are having somebody in their corner that is going to have it really hard. The sellers, they want to make as much money as possible. Like nobody can blame them. I, when I'm on the seller's side, yeah, I want you to make as much money as possible too. But when it comes to somebody who's buying their first ever home, we we are working with a different set of finances. So if you have 45 minutes to an hour, don't be scared about what the process looks like. Uh, know that you're going to be able to ask me all of those scary questions about down payments and mortgage types and um, inspections and appraisals and, and how I negotiate to get you more money and the data that backs up my negotiations. Like I know it feels scary to take that first step, but like, setting an appointment with me is dipping your toe in and then once you feel oh wow like this guy already warmed up the water for me then we can jump in head full and and make sure that we are looking at houses you know that we've already talked to a lender we're already pre-approved we're in these houses like in a very serious way if we make an offer it is in a in a way that is going to win not simply just uh you know throwing our hat in there and seeing if we can win it like when we find your dream home, we have no choice but to win it or find alternatives and, and stay positive throughout the whole thing, you know? Like at the end of our 45 minutes, you should feel positive about this. It should, it should scare you a little bit. It's a, the biggest investment that most people make, but like, I want to inspire you to do that because what if we do it and then down the road, we end up getting you an extra 10, 20, $30,000 in your bank. Like, wouldn't that help your family? Because I know it would help mine. So um, the only thing I would plug is, you know, go to Bono Life Homes. Um, give us give us the phone number or an email that we can reach out to you and say, hey, one of our buyer specialists is on the phones right now. And we can, like, if this is if you're looking to dip your toe in, check out my appointment, schedule an appointment with me. At the end of 45 minutes to an hour, you feel like, ah, we, we don't think we want to do this. I'll still weigh the pros and cons for you. And ultimately, we need to find you um, a lease. That's cool too. Like I can still help you with that. If you show me that you're serious enough to give me an hour of your time, like I will, I will jump through hoops. I will bend over backwards for you. Like we, we appreciate people reaching out to us and, and taking that first step because if I hadn't, you know, been encouraged to do it, by my wife who knew every step already this is before i was an agent uh we wouldn't be starting off our family in in this positive way it might have gone a different way we might still be renting um but being educated and being inspired by others who are doing the same thing has gotten us to where we are and, and we're thankful that those people gave us gave us their loyalty and their honesty and their their advice because you should lean on a professional. And just like I lean on my team leaders, John and Lindsay Bonacci. If I don't know an answer, I can be honest with you and say, I don't know, but I will go to these people with 10 years of experience and make sure that I'm giving you um, something that will at least educate you. So yeah, yeah. nothing about really go, I don't know, like my Facebook. Uh, <laughs> add me on Facebook if you have any questions like, is a great place to start a relationship together. Some of the people I've started a relationship with, um, you know, we started this two years ago and they're just now to the point where they're like, my credit is ready to go. Like, Let's do this. Let's do it, baby. And, and you know, it, it makes us glad that we are even, you know, doing a podcast. It might bring a new relationship with somebody. It might start them on a, a three-year path to have them buying a house and being in a great place. So, yeah, 
I appreciate you inviting me on. Any, any quick questions you have about real estate before I let you go? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, um, you know, you, you kind of touched on something pretty good there, just talking about, you know, your wife kind of giving you that, that positive nudge um, in the right direction. And, uh, you know, it kind of seems like everyone needs that every now and then. Um, yeah. And even it, ultimately, it is just a nudge. Like, if somebody is pushing you into it, like, I, I sure hope that they're providing some financial support as well. Like, you know, if, if you're at the edge of, of the pool, if, if they give you a nudge, you can still make your own decision on if you want to jump in. They just throw you into the pool. It's like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need your help now. And ultimately, if that's the kind of person you are, you just jump in head first. It's like, hey, I'll, I'll be your lifeguard. That's not a problem at all. We, we work with all types of folks, like all across Austin. Even if you're moving here, like the process is pretty much the same all across Texas, kind of around the U.S. The only thing that changes is the prices. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Giles. Well, I, I really appreciate you coming on. That's been, a, you know, you know, you did a bang up job. That was a really uh, insightful chat that we had and uh, hope yeah. to have you back on another time. Absolutely. And I hope you guys see that this is a hundred real like the main role of a realtor is just a hundred percent honesty with you guys. Um, in whatever conversation we're going to have, we just want to make sure that we provide you guys with an expert in the corner. So I hope that you guys, you know, I hope that it brought up more questions. Like I hope people can, watch this and say like, well, he didn't explain, you know, this type of mortgage or, you know, my husband's a veteran. Like, does he, does he specialize in those? Like people who come to me with these questions, I can share with them the deals that I just did with a veteran or with a USDA loan or with an interest rate that is at a historic well. So hopefully these, you know, this is just a starting for a lot of people saying, Hey, I need to talk to this Giles guy or, or anybody from Mono Life Homes and see, if they might be able to start me on a path that three years from now is, is going to get me a happy little place for, for my dogs and my kids and, and my wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, et cetera. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. I'm a, uh, you're, you're getting me you jazzed up. We, you know, we, <laughs> we, we talked to, we talked a lot about you kind of getting me going about, you know, investing Tesla, Apple, so much growth happening around here. Um, and you know, it's, it's great having really, knowledgeable guests like yourself come on so i, right. I appreciate it man yeah and you everybody deserves to work with a realtor that is excited about real estate because it is so just difficult to wrap your head around but then when you wrap your head around it it's like oh it's so simple like yeah like, so sometimes you do it once and then they're like oh like i want to do this again i want to be an investor and then we have people bringing in an extra three, four hundred dollars per month. It's like cool. This is this all came from you giving me one hour of your time, me helping you be educated and inspired about the home buying process, so that you can see that anybody can do it. Like even if somebody is like, I don't want to buy a home, but I want to start selling them. Like come talk to me. Like this this another lead. Even if you're gonna come join our team, even if you don't want to join our team, like. Let me educate you and inspire you to do what was very scary for me three years ago when my wife was sitting there propping me up, being like, I am here to support you. No matter what happens, like everything will be okay. I can be that person for you. So yeah, I appreciate you, you know, the opportunity to talk to people about real estate um, and show people how competent we are when it comes to real estate, just because we sold 107 houses just in the last 12 months alone. So Hopefully people will come to me with lots of questions. Um, uh, we're question answering machines. Absolutely. Sounds good. So cool. I hope you're doing well. I appreciate you. Um, and uh, of course, as always, hook them horns. Hook them horns, baby. That's right. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, man. Talk yeah, to you. I appreciate you guys. Have a great day.